Greetings from Yahweh in Yahshua's temple. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. We are broadcasting from Evanston, Illinois, and we are glad that you have tuned in to the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. We are going to start on sermon number two. Let's start out in Matthew, the 19th chapter. This is a sermon number two, and it is entitled, Yeah, Yeah, Never Never, 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 ever feel sorry for yourself. Yes. On the Matthew, the 19th chapter. Hallelujah. Matthew, or Matitya, or Mataya. Yes. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Hallelujah. I heard a brother um, on the phone, and he pronounced it Mataya. Ah, uh, yes. So. His name he took, so he knows, how to, he knows how to say it. Praise so, God. Yeah, yeah, never, 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 ever feel sorry for yourself. Well, the Matthew, the 19th chapter. And uh, we're going to read verses 21 to 22. Yes. So you are responsible for how you show up yes. in this life. If you want to lay down, roll over, and play dead. Okay. You do that, uh -huh. but having cautioned you about throwing pity parties and inviting others to attend. Right. Matthew 19, let's read verses 21 to 22. Praise God. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 21. Yeshua said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now we read this in, in the, the first sermon, and we had looked at some, some uh, other scriptures uh, to where nobody was sorry when, when heaven uh, approached them to have them do some things on the earth. And then we saw in this instance, that uh, this young man, uh, the Messiah, approached him, and he said, "If if if you want to do this thing right, if you, if you want to please yes. uh, heaven, he said, uh, go do this thing, and then you'll have treasure." And then he said, "And then you come follow me." Uh huh. And but but here we see uh, when the young man heard that, uh, he he was filled with sorry. Sorry is for himself. Uh -huh. That sorrowful is full of sorrow for himself. Uh -huh. Go to 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. So this young man threw a pity party for himself uh -huh. when the Messiah asked him to sell what he had and give it to the poor and then follow him. 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. So a pity party is a feel sorry for yourself party right. that you throw for yourself. I know, right? Where, like you, it, where you blame others <clears throat> and you spend lots of time talking about how bad others treat you to like your told and you, how, how bad life is know, right? for you <clears throat> every time you feel anyone or anything is unfair to you. Right, right. That's what a pity party is. That's it. First Samuel, the 22nd chapter. The young man threw a pity party for himself uh -huh. and thought that it was unfair. And that was a bad way for the Messiah to treat him and ask him to do it. First Samuel 22. Let's read verses 7 to 8. Praise God. 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 7. Then Shaul said unto his servant that stood, that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captives of thousands and captives of hundreds. Now here's, here's uh -huh. King Shaul. And this is after uh, Shaul uh, disagreed with what heaven told him to do. Uh -huh. And um, then, then um, heaven said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to anoint somebody else uh, with, a, with a mind that thinks like me and what yes. heaven tell him to do. Yes. And so uh, King Dawid was anointed. He's not sitting on the throne yet. Now here's Shaul, uh, after he knows that uh, Dawid has been anointed, he's saying uh, unto his servants that uh, stood about him, all right, now here now, um, you Benjaminites, 
Well, the son of Jesse, he's talking about uh, Dawi, who had been anointed king. Give every one of you fields and vineyards. He said, look how nice I've been to you. Uh -huh. I gave you fields and vineyards. No, he didn't, because y'all uh -huh. gave them to him and told him who to give them to. Right, right. And I made you captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, so I, I gave you fame and, uh -huh. and, and people could look up to you. He said, look how nice I've been to you. And he said, well, will, will uh, King Dawi, the son of Jesse, do that for you? Uh -huh. All right, verse 8. Verse 8, that all of you have conspired against me, uh -huh. and there is none that showed me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me, uh -huh. or showed unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me to uh -huh. lie in wait as at this day. Uh -huh. So now he's, he's having a pity party for himself. <laughs> yeah. He said, now, and all of you have conspired against me. That what happened with the pity party. Where uh, uh, people, you look at, you know, everyone is, is doing stuff against you. Right, and, right. And being mean to so you. Think. He's saying, he is King Joe, uh, all of you has conspired against me. <laughs> right. And then there's none that shows me that my son, his son, uh, Jonathan and Jonathan, had made a league with the son of Jesse. Now, all Jonathan did was come in line with uh, what the kingdom of heaven was doing yes. on earth. And he understood that uh, King Dawid had been anointed, and so that's the league he's joining yes. on with. Uh, this man is, is trying to invite them to attend his pity party. He said, there's none of you that's sorry uh -huh. for me. Well, if you wanted to still be king, all you had to do was do what heaven was that's telling it. you to do. Hallelujah. He said, or showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me huh. to lie in wait as as this day. But they weren't against him. Right, right. They were just going with what heaven said. Yes. Go to Matthew again, the 18th chapter. Matthew, the 18th chapter. So if you feel sorry for yourself, huh. it will cost you. King Saul felt sorry for himself. Right, right. He threw himself a pity party and invited others to attend. Yes. Matthew the 18th chapter. Are you sorry? So when you feel sorry for yourself, you punish people. Huh. When you feel their apologies are not good enough right, right. for you. Matthew 18. You punish people. Huh. When you feel their apologies are not good enough for you. And now we had looked at this uh, scripture in the, in the first sermon too. But uh, the Ruach said, let's look at it again yes. and bring out another point. Is that right? Matthew 18, verses 29 to 30. Praise God. Matthew chapter 18, verses 29 to 30. Praise God. Let's read. Matthew chapter 18, and verse 29. And this, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 30, And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. Now we saw this in the first show, but now we're comparing it with King Shaul, okay. standing up and, and telling everybody how you don't feel sorry for me, and, and you conspired against me, and, and you didn't even tell me that my own son, he's joined in league against me. So now when you feel sorry for yourself and then you understand the facts about what King Shaul did following after King David trying to hunt him uh -huh, down. Uh -huh. And uh, so when you feel sorry for yourself, you punish people when you uh -huh. feel their apologies are not good enough for you. Uh -huh. King Dawi was, was playing the harp and, you know, helping Shaul out and, and, and winning battles for him. He killed Goliath and made the, the Israelite army look good. Yeah, yeah. So now we hear, we see here, here's this man in, in the New Testament. And uh, here you read up above and see that he owes somebody something right, more. Right. Well, now here somebody owes him something less. Right. And so this man said, you know, um, have mercy on me. I, yes. I, I'm, I'm going to give you. So, so you feel sorry for yourself. So you punish people. Huh when you feel their apologies are not good enough. So he had this man put in prison. Right, right. You become prosecutor, huh. judge, and jury, like is, convicting right. others of committing crimes against you. Right, right, right. Ezekiel 13. Tell like your daddy told you to. Ezekiel 13. Praise him. 
So he, he convicted this man of the same right? crime that he committed. Hallelujah. And put him in jail. Huh. So when you feel sorry for yourself, just like King Shaul, he uh -huh. put Dawid in jail. Right, really, right. he said, I'm going to kill Dawid. I know, right? So he was even worse. Huh. Ezekiel 13. Feel sorry for yourself, you punish people. You put them in your personal prison. Yep. You lock the door and throw the key yeah, on. All right. Ezekiel 13 and verse 20. Praise God. Chapter 13 and Praise let's God. read verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 20. Wherefore thus saith Yah Elohim, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye they hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Huh. Now, and I've been reading this for years, and, and uh, I asked uh, uh, heaven for revelation on Hallelujah. this, and, and yesterday and today, it just started coming. It says, Hallelujah. Wherefore, thus said Yahweh Elohim. He's against something now. Heaven is against something right, right, right here. Right, right, I'm right. against your pillows. Huh. So a pillow sounds like something that should be nice and comfy and, and something that you lay on to get some rest. He said, but there's people using pillows to hunt souls to make them fly. And we're going to look and see what is this they hunt souls to make them fly. And he said, I will tear them from your arms. Yes. And will let the souls go, okay. even the soul that you hunt, to make them fly. Uh -huh. And then I, I, I had uh, I got a, 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 a vision of where you know somebody put somebody in a headlock, yeah, yeah. and then they got the, their head right there, and that's what started coming when it's time. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, tear them right, right. from your arms. Yeah. Or having the people in a headlock. Yes. So when you feel sorry for yourself, you demand others to stay in your personal prison, <laughs> walk around you on eggshells, I know, and right? watch what they say or do around you. Uh -huh. So now let's look at let's look at this. This time I went this somebody's hunting souls and trying to make them fly. Uh -huh. So let's see what those four English words to make them fly. What is that? Four English words to make them fly are one primitive Hebrew root word, parak, found as strong as exaltive concordance of the Old and New Testaments, uh, number 6524. Strong defines to make them fly as meaning to break forth as a bud. For example, bloom, generally to spread, specifically to fly as extending the wings figuratively to flourish abroad, abundantly, blossom, break forth, break out, bud, flourish, grow, spread, and spring up. And now, so it sounds like, okay, um, hunting the souls to make them fly, it sounds like that's a good thing, but now you see where it says it can't be because heaven records that it's against you. Right, right, right. If you if you are like this, uh -huh. if you hunt souls to make them fly, so whatever that making them fly, budding and blossoming and spreading and coming forth with wings, evidently it must be in a way that's against yeah, yeah. what heaven wants. Yeah. So so let's see where it says I'm against your pillows. Like what is that talking about? Uh -huh. As as the Ruach said, a pillow is supposed to be something you lay down, you know, right, right. And, and comfort your head and and and. and nice and soft, but if heaven is against your pillows, there's, there's something huh. going on yeah, yeah. more than just a pillow. Yeah, like it is, Let's see so what like these, these English through. words are. This, the six English words, Behold, I am against your pillows, are one Hebrew word, cassette, found as strong as exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 3705. Strong defines, Behold, I am against your pillows, as from Testament uh, as from Hebrew number 3680 meaning band 
a comfortable support for sitting or leaning on covered small piece of jewelry thought to give protection against evil, danger, or disease. False Torah, false Torah texts used by false prophets in Yisrael to support the demonic fortune telling scheme. All right, so now these pillows, it says it's, it's a support to sit and lean on, but it's, it's false Torah texts used by false prophets in, in Israel to support their demonic fortune telling right, scheme. Right, right. So it's sending people these pillows are making people be comfortable in lies yeah, yeah. that heaven is against. And, and hunting the souls to make them fly. Where are they flying? They're flying away from heaven. Yeah, right. Go to Matthew the 23rd chapter. Praise the mighty God. So, so it's not a good thing. It can't no, be a not. good thing if heaven said, hey, I'm against you. I know, right? I'm against your pillows where uh -huh. you, make, you hunt the souls to right, make right. them fly. Matthew 23rd chapter. And then you're making them blossom and bud and thinking that they're in some truth. Right, right. And you got them in some falsity. That's it. Tell like it is, bro. Tell like your daddy told you. Thinking they're you. flourishing and, and springing up and being protected against evil and danger and disease, but they're right in the middle of it. Yes. Invite me in. Matthew 23 and verse 15. Praise God for his word of truth. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell. Than yourselves. Huh. Mr. Mighty eye. So now this is what uh, Ezekiel was talking about when he was right. talking about I'm against your pillows. Uh -huh. Where with you hunt souls to make them fly. Right, right. And, and he said, the heaven said, I'm gonna tear them from your arms. Yeah, and you will it. and you will I will let the souls go that you hunt to make them fly. Yeah, totally so that, so here uh, the book of Ezekiel is recording about using feeling sorry for yourself as witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. He's saying, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, two-faced. Yeah, yeah. And I got in the, the um, truck right after um, y'all had me finish the lesson, and um, I was coming to print it out and turn on the sermon. And wasn't this man talking about two-faced? Yeah. Talking about people coming uh, to church with their church faces, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he said, you know, you wouldn't know them. <laughs> at home, or you wouldn't know them. Well, they got a face for the job, and they, they got a face for, you know, when they're out in public, yeah, yeah, and they got a face yeah. for when they come to the church or right, to the temple. Right. But then you see them at their house, and you wouldn't know them. It was yeah. like uh, Dr. Jekyll and, and right. Mr. Hyde. So he said, Woe unto you, yes. scribes and Pharisees, two faced hypocrites. Right, right. You can pass sea and land and make one proselyte, and when he is made, this is what Ezekiel talking about, hunt souls to make them fly, in other words, flourish in a lie. Right. You make them twofold more the child of the lake of fire than you are yourself. Yep. Go to Exodus 22. Hallelujah. So the word. book of Ezekiel is recording about using feeling sorry for yourself as witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Eliciting sympathy or trying to gather people I know, right? around you and playing on their emotions. Right. Exodus 22. To get support for yourself so you can start them flying off on a lie. Right. See, uh, Exodus 22, we're going to read verse 18. So, Praise according to God. heaven, witchcraft is trying to gain control through undercover, immoral, and dishonest principles. Yep. That's what Ezekiel. Heaven had Ezekiel talking about when he uh -huh. talking about hunting the souls to make them fly. And got those pillows where it seems like it's comfortable yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. undercover and it's subtle and it is deception. Right, right. But it's feeling sorry for yourself and it's witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. Exodus 22 and 18. Praise right, 
Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Nope. All right, so that was it. You should not even allow a witch to live. So let's see what this, this, these six English words. Uh, don't suffer a witch to live. See, because huh. people get these uh, ideas about what a witch is flying on a broom. <laughs> and, right. And got this, this other stuff. The good witch, bad witch, and all that. Uh, it's nothing but bad witches. That's it. You said, heaven said, you shall not allow a witch to live. In other words, expose it. That's it. That's it. Because witchcraft tries to gain control through undercover, immoral, and dishonest principles. Right. They are hunting souls yep. to have them fly away from what heaven wants them yes. to do. Yes. All right, the six English words, thou shalt not suffer a witch. Let's, what does that mean? The six English words, thou shalt not suffer a witch, are one prim primitive Hebrew root word, Shaf, found as strong exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 3784. Strong defines, thou shalt not suffer a witch as meaning to whisper a spell, That's for right. example, to fill with great delight, charm, or put someone under a spell. That's it. Be bewitch, practice magic, practice sorcery, sorcery, use witchcraft. Sorcerers, adulterers, and false swearers. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 13. So, not suffering the wish to live means uh, you shall not allow them That's to right. charm or put someone I under know, a spell right? or to bewitch someone. That's right. That's how I do it. You're supposed to expose that. That's Exodus how I do it. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 13. Hallelujah. Yes, I apologize. Ezekiel 13. Praise God. So all pillows are not uh, for comfort. No, they're not. Not the ones that's hunting your soul, trying to make it fly away from what heaven tells you. Like it is, Roger. Like Ezekiel it is, Ezekiel 13, we want to read verse 21. Praise him. Ezekiel chapter 13, and verse 21. Your curse also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am. Yes. So here he's talking again yes. about, you know, these pillows. He said, now, now your kerchiefs huh. also I will tear. And I'll deliver my people out of your hand. Because there's that undercover, that covert control, which is witchcraft. All right. That dishonest control. Yeah, yeah. And they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted. Yes. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. Yes. So feeling sorry for yourself is the immorality of witchcraft huh. seeking to choke hold yep. half Nelson and full Nelson others to gain control over them. All right. So let's see what these, these kerchiefs are. These two English words. Your kerchiefs. Uh huh. So, so. It, so when you feel sorry for yourself, you're using the pillows, huh. and then um, you're, you're, you're hunting souls to, to make them fly. And so, so now it's saying you got some kerchiefs know, that right? you're using that, that heaven's going to tear huh. to deliver his people out of your hand. So what are these two English words, your kerchiefs? The two English words, your kerchiefs, are one Hebrew word, mispaka found a strong exaltive concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 455. Strong defines your kerchief as from Hebrews 5596, meaning a long veil or a piece of fine material spread out and worn to protect or conceal the face, a false face, and in... Now, your kerchief is a false face. Huh. It said there's uh, some, something worn to protect and conceal. Your real face. Uh -huh. A false face and an image. So we're in Ezekiel 13. Mm -hmm. And we want to read verse 22. So I, I there's a, a sweet sister of mine. And for years after I met her, she used to talk about how everybody thought her aunt was so nice and you know uh -huh. how she was pretty and she looked good and everything. So evidently her 
her mother was her, her aunt's sister. In some kind of way, she and, and her brother ended up, you know, living in her aunt's house uh, with her mother. And um, she, she used to, whenever she would say something about her, she said, yeah, you know, she looked nice, and everybody huh. thought she was nice, but she was me as H-E-L-L. And then I would laugh, because right. she was she was mean as yeah. H-E-L-L. Yeah. It was like in the house to right. watch. <laughs> and so, I, but, and, you know, as years went by, and I mean, she just never got over that, and huh. every time she would say it, but I mean, she was pretty, she dressed nice, and right. she looked nice, but she was mean as H-E-L-L. <laughs> yeah. And then I just had to laugh with you. Yeah, yeah, they out there. So this is what this is talking about. Yeah. Something worn to conceal and protect right. that face, to put, put up a false face yeah, and yeah. an image. All right, let's read verse 22. Ezekiel 13 and 22. Right, John. Right, word. Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 22. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sin, huh. whom I have not made sin, huh. and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way huh. by promising him life. See, so this is what did the hunt and souls for the pillows yeah, yeah. And, and got that witchcraft going to where they're believing lies. All right, all right. It says, because with lies, uh -huh. You have made the mind of the righteous sad with lies, huh. whom I have not made sad. And you strengthen the hands of the wicked. So either you for heaven or you against heaven. Strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Huh. By lying to him, right, right. telling him. Gathering together as a group, as a gang, in hatred huh. against the servants of, of Yah is something that's exemplary and this righteousness. Go to Isaiah 25. But uh, you said, hey, heaven, heaven is against your pillars. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 25. So a witchcraft chokehold. Uh -huh. is you using strong choking pressure applied to the neck of somebody else. Right. So that strong choking pressure, uh, uh, pressure is you pretending like you know scripture so good, <laughs> you set yourself up as the teacher of them <laughs> rather than, than have heaven be their teacher. <laughs> a witchcraft half Nelson is a wrestling term where you hold one arm and the neck of another from behind with one of your arms so it's difficult for them to move. Yeah, yeah. So all this is being done on, on people's minds. Yeah. But at the, the base of that is that pity party, that feeling sorry for yourself party, and to where people who have good intentions and, and want the best for you, right. but you're using witchcraft to turn and twist that to make them get wound up in that, that right. emotionalism. Yeah, like it is, bro, like your daddy told you to. Joining you at that pity party. Right. Going to Isaiah 25. We're going to read verse 7. Praise God. So a rich crab full, Nelson, is you uh -huh. holding both arms yep. of somebody else from behind and their neck. So it's difficult for them to, meet, to move. Yep, yep. Isaiah 25. Trying to keep them in your prison. Yeah, yeah. Verse 7. Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. Yes. And the veil that is spread over all people. Alright, so so it's talking about that that false face that that you have on there. Right, right. And really all you're doing is just looking for some sympathy, <laughs> looking for some 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 groupies around I yourself. Know, right? But it said, hey. Heaven gonna destroy yes. in this mountain the face of the covering. I know, right? That false face uh -huh. that's cast over all people. And the veil that's spread over all nations. Uh -huh. Go to Matthew 23. So you easily proclaim how nice you are and how hard others are to uh -huh. get along with. Uh -huh. Matthew 23. And then we want to read really what this, this veil is when we get to Matthew 23. Praise God. You easily proclaim how nice you are right, right. 
and how hard other people are to get along with. That's that, that face covering. That's, that's making the righteous sad because you're telling them lies. Right, right. Are right, you in Matthew 23? Okay, so, so let's read where it talks about that veil that spread. Uh, what's those, those things for the veil that was in Isaiah 25 and 7? Right, so you so we can see. Yes. So uh, the three English words and the veil of one Hebrew word, Maseka, found at strong exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 4541. Strong defines it as from Hebrew 5258, meaning a pouring over. For example, fusion of metal, especially a cast image by implication a libation, for example, leak, concretely a coverlet, as if poured out, covering and molten image. All right, so it said uh, you got a leak uh, with the, the enemy. You got a coverlet on, that false face, coverlet as it poured out. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, oh, yeah. Dr. Jekyll is the one that's public <laughs> that you show. But let somebody be I'm at your right. house, like, like my sister, yeah, you know my aunt, she looked nice, and everybody thought she was not Mr. Right, right. She was mean as yeah, yeah. -E yeah, F. Right. And it says, uh, a covering and a molten image. Matthew 23, let's read verses 27 to 28. Praise on. For the word of truth. Freaks come out at night, I demons know. come out at home. Yeah, I know, Matthew right? 23, 27, or 28. Let's read. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, when ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful, yeah, yeah. but are within, full of dead man's yeah. bones and of all uncleanness. Okay. Verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto uh -huh. men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Yeah, got them out there. All right, he said, uh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, two-faced. You look good on the outside. He said, outside, oh, man, you look beautiful. Right, right. But within, dead men bones and all unclean. <laughs> he said, outwardly. Yeah. Look like you got it going on, yeah. but within. I know, right? Two face. Huh. And false. So feeling sorry for yourself is outwardly retouching and photo finishing your appearance to make it look good. All the time claiming poor old me. Right. And look at all the unholy idiots I have to put up with uh -huh. around me. Right, right, right. That's really what's going on. Yeah. You done elevated yourself so like you're is, supposed to be worshipped. You, know. you put yourself up above everybody else. Uh -huh. That's why you keep throwing these pity parties. <laughs> and everybody's supposed to come sit and worship at your feet. Right, right. Retouching and photo finishing your outward appearance to make it look good. Right. All the time saying, poor me. And look at all the unholy idiots I have to put up with uh -huh. around me. Uh -huh. Matthew 23, let's read verses 29 to 34. Praise the mighty God. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Verse 30. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Yeah, verse 31. Oh. Verse 31. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the uh, Now, here is, here is uh, uh, the Messiah speaking. Woe unto you, scribes and fair, Steve, two face. Uh, you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. You look like you were one of them. Right, right. 
And you even say, hey, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them to kill these prophets. And he said, uh, now you're witnessing for yourself. Uh, right, right. You're the children of those who killed the prophets. Uh -huh. So you got the same spirit. That's, right. that's in your lineage. Right. You just told on yourself. Right. Verse 32. Verse 32. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. He said, right. okay, so you live up to that or live down to that. Right, right. You still got that uh, what is it, generational demonic activity yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah. on, and and it it's seen. You said then fill up the measure of your fathers. <laughs> uh, you're you're forgetting about what heaven says, so fill up the measure of your <laughs> fathers. Step into their shoes and and do the same thing they're right, doing. Right. Matter of fact, you are doing that. Right, right. Thirty-three, first thirty-three. Ye serpents, ye generations of vipers, how can ye escape huh. from the damnation of hell? Verse 34, Wherefore, behold, I sent unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and uh -huh. crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your temples and persecute them from city to city. All right, so so he said for, for the, the, the two-faced scribes and Pharisees to talk about how wonderful they are, and right. what they wouldn't have done, they wouldn't have killed the prophets. Uh -huh. He told him, you're lying. He uh -huh. said, you serpents, you snakes, you generation of vipers, poisonous snakes. Yeah, yeah. How can you escape the damnation of the lake of fire? He said, wherefore, behold, I'm going to send you prophets, wise men, scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. He said, I, I don't right, care right. what you say. I'm looking at you. Right. I'm looking at your heart. Right, right. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, yeah. And some of them shall you scourge in your temples and persecute yeah. them from city to city. Yeah. Go to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Genesis 27. Genesis 27. Praise so God. the scriptures gave you your priorities. Uh -huh. They record what you are to see yeah, yeah. and regard and treat as important. Yes. Genesis 27. And one of those priorities is not to be led by your feelings. All right. Hmm. Praise God for his word. Well, this is 27, and we want to read verses 21 to 23. Hallelujah. Praise God. Genesis 27, 21 to 23. Let's read. Genesis chapter 27, um, verse 21. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near. I pray thee that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Now, he was huh. mad, and, and his eyes, it says they were dim, so I guess he, he I don't know if he was blind altogether, but either way, um, he wasn't seeing that good. Right, right. This is one of the righteous patriarchs. But he's, he's telling uh, his son, uh, Yaakov, you know, come near so I can feel you. Because the, the son that he wanted, uh, Esau, he was a hairy man. He said, I'm going to feel you whether you're my son uh, Esau or not. Huh. Well, as, as heaven's offspring, we're not supposed to be using our five senses to, <laughs> to discern what somebody is about or, or who somebody is. All right. So, so he was off. Let, let, me, let me feel you. <laughs> To see, let me use that as a as a, a uh, an indicator. And then the lesson is, uh, yeah, yeah, never, 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 never feel uh -huh. sorry for yourself. Right, right. So, so the the scriptures record and gave you your priorities, and one of them is not to be led by your feelings. That's it. But, but we see that this righteous man, he wanted to be led by his feelings. Right, right. Verse twenty-two. Verse 22, and Yaakov went near unto his Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Yaakov's voice, but the hands are, are, the, are the hands of Esau. So now he's so intent on going this right, way, right. And, and just looking at the outside, as my, as my sweet sister said, yeah, you look at her from the outside. <laughs> yeah, we, she we, we mean know. as I know, right? E double L. I know. So 
So he said, you know, uh, the voice is Jacob's, but right. I'm feeling the hands. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go with the, the natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. I know, right? 23. Verse 23. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. Huh. All right, so actually it was Yaakov, <laughs> but but Yitzchak wasn't tuning in because right, right. he decided he, <laughs> he's going to go on the lower level right, right. to identify him. Go to Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. So the scriptures gave you your priorities. And they tell you what to, to see but yeah, yeah. treat as important. Yes. And going by your feelings huh. is not in the mix. No, it's not. It was the eighth chapter. Because your feelings can lie to you. I know, right? So when giving up what the scripture say gives you the pleasure of feeling sorry for yourself, huh. you give them up. I know, right? What was the eighth chapter? Verses 36 to 37. Praise on. So if that's your choice, uh -huh. Going by what the scriptures say, or feeling sorry for yourself, you give up the scriptures. I know, right? Romans 8, 36 and 37. Right, so. Romans chapter 8 and verse 36. As, is, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than yes. Through him that loved us. Yeah. All right. So now uh, heaven said, all right, you may go through some stuff. All right, right. Well, it said, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, never, never, never ever feel sorry for yourself. Right. As is written, for huh. heaven's sake, uh -huh. we are killed all the day long. Yes, we are. Tongues wagging, <laughs> foot stomping, text burning up, whatever. Right, right. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Hallelujah. We're still going to stand up and, and say what yeah. heaven tells Just us to say. It, Yahweh. The Bible right, because it said, uh, uh, <laughs> nay, not feeling sorry for ourselves. In all these things, not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Yeah, yeah. Through him that loved yeah. us. Through the Messiah that gave his life for us. Yeah. So we could stand up and be this yeah, way. Right. So look at this more than conquerors. What what, is, what do those words mean when it says you are more than a conqueror? Yes. In five English words, we are more than conquerors are one Greek word found at Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 5245. Strong defines we are more than conquerors as from Greek, number 5228, and Greek number 53. And Greek number 3528, meaning to defeat thoroughly beyond. Yes. For example, gain a decisive victory and more than overcome the, and take control by use of yes. military force. All right. Uh, a more than conqueror uh, means that uh, you have gained a decisive victory. Yes. And you have more than overcome and, and taken control. All right. By use of military force. Huh. Go to Isaiah the third chapter. Right, the words. So when, when you give up what the scripture says, uh, to give yourself uh, the pleasure of feeling sorry for yourself, huh. um, you are not taking uh, what heaven said about you. No, you're not. Isaiah the third chapter. Right. Why? Because your flesh prefers <laughs> having that pity party. <laughs> Yeah. Your flesh prefers that attention. Yeah, yeah. Your flesh prefers those people gathered around you. Uh huh. That's in the third chapter. So you feeling sorry for yourself and playing the victim is more important than what the scriptures right, say. Right, right. You said you're more than a conqueror. And you say, woe is me. Nobody knows the trouble right, I'm saying. Right, right. Come sit around, let me hold <laughs> hand. Let, let me hold a meeting. I know, right? So I can discuss <laughs> how bad everybody's treated me. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm so holy. I'm the holiest thing walking. 
need to do me like you do the Pope. <laughs> clear the streets and, and I'm so holy, I, I'm, I'm in the midst of this perverse and, and crooked generation. And, and my light is shining so, so bright, it's like when the, uh, when the wise men came looking for the star over the Savior. Yeah, yeah. That's what's happening at the pity party yeah, yeah. that you hold, feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, just like it is, bro. Just like the daddy told you. Yup. Playing the victim. Huh. You think it's more important than what the scriptures say. Right, right. Isaiah the third chapter, let's read verses 17 to 24. Praise on. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 17. Therefore, the master will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And Yahweh will discover their secret parts. You all right? He said, now uh, uh, we're going to smite right, right. with a scab. Uh-huh. And however beautiful you looking, all right. he's going to put a big old scab on there, the crown of your head. And discover your secret parts. Yeah, yeah. Got that veil on and got that, that uh, fake front. Right. That false face. It's going to be opened up. Yeah, yeah. 18. Verse 18. In the day, in the day Yahweh will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calves and their round tires like the moon. <laughs> Verse 19. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. Verse 20, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. Verse 21, the rings and nose jewels. Number 22, uh, verse 22, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crispy pins. Verse 23. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And the veils! Uh -huh. Decked out, looking right. good, right. just like right. the scribes and Pharisees. Yeah. Outwardly. Got all kind of jewelry uh -huh. and ring, rings in the nose, rings in the ear. All kind of clothes. Hair, you know, waved and, and uh -huh. got all kind of ornaments in it. That's it. And that day, huh. Yahweh gonna take away that that bravery, all this stuff you got covered up. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, a comedian um, telling a joke about nowadays when people got all this stuff on, and then uh, people want to commit fornication. Uh -huh. Fornication would have been they go into the room and, right. and, <laughs> and they start taking stuff right. off, and then when it's all over, you find out. There's, there's not one of each uh, <laughs> gender because yeah. they had on so much fake stuff. Right. And they're like, okay, wait a minute, this is not even a woman. Uh, this is what are you talking about? I'm going to take away that bravery yeah, that's of, right. of, of all this, this outward stuff that that's you right. got. And you look ugly. And then, not only that, you're going to stink. Verse yeah. 24. Verse 24, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girl, a rent. And instead of a, and instead of well set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomach girl, a a, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. Uh -huh. All right. So the hair be set on the side, and you find out they got a bald head. Uh -huh. And it said, uh, instead of sweet smell, it stink. Go to Ezekiel 28 chapter. You feel sorry for yourself and playing a victim. Yeah, yeah. It is not more important than what the scriptures say. Huh. Ezekiel 28 chapter. Now I remember years ago, there was a uh, friend of mine, and uh, she went downstate uh, to the university. And I went to a, a separate university, but anyway, we met in Chicago, and then so we were hanging out together. And then she uh, hit her 30th birthday. So we went to uh, 
to her, her party. That's when I was celebrating birthdays. I found out after I came to Yahweh. But that's not something that um, a Hebrew Israelite um, should do. That's uh, that's, that's, uh, right. that's like it is. That's like your daddy told so, you to. So before I, I came to Yahweh and before I knew it, right? I went to her 30th birthday party. She was just off of Lakeshore Drive there in Hyde Park where you get off at 47th Street and they got those nice uh, high rises. Yeah, yeah. And um, so uh, she was staying with her mom. She had a nice high rise. So then, when I uh, came in the door, all these old sad records were being <laughs> played. And so then, I said, well, you know, maybe that's just, you know, one record. <laughs> so I'm there about, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and then each record just sadder and sadder. And then as people coming in, they were all looking around like, well, what happened? Did somebody die? Like, huh? Why do these sad records keep going? <laughs> so what it was, was, well, my girlfriend was sad that she had hit 30. Uh -huh. And she decided she was going to go throw a pity party. Because we came in, you understand, yeah. this, this Saturday night or Friday night, and she just playing all these sad records, all right. throwing herself a pity party uh -huh. because she hit 30. Uh -huh. Ezekiel 28, verses 23 to 24. Praise up. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 23. For I will send into her pestilence and blood into her streets, and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the store of uh -huh. her on every side, and they shall know that I am Yah. Verse 24. And there shall be no more a pricking briar unto the house of Israel nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them. And they shall know that huh? I am Yah Elohim. All right, it said, uh, verse 24, there shall be no more a pricking briar huh? unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them. Death by a thousand cuts. Huh. That pricking briar and thorns. So now you're talking about something that'll draw blood, right? Yep. Talking about people that feeling sorry for themselves, telling lies to people huh. to get them to fly away from, from what heaven is telling them to do. Right, right. They're grieving thorns huh. and pricking briars unto the house of Israel. Huh. And they despise right. the servants of Yah. Huh. But he said, they should know that I am Yahweh Halloween. So the word victim is not in the scriptures. But a victim focuses on the past. Huh. Right. Tries to live in the present. Huh. And sabotages <laughs> the future I know, right? by throwing pity parties. Huh. So, so this verse in, in Ezekiel is talking about uh, nor any grieving thorn. So uh -huh. what is a grieving thorn that's, that's round about you and I that are uh -huh. the true servants of Yahweh? What does that mean? The three English words nor grieving are one primitive he Hebrew root word ka'ab, strong exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament. Number 3510 strong defines nor any grieving as meaning to feel pain by implication to grieve figuratively to spoil grieving mar have pain make sad make sore and be sorrowful. All right so so we saw in the scripture where where uh, heaven said they're coming against those people to make my people sad yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and make them sorrowful when right. I didn't make them sad. So here it's talking about uh, this, this uh, nor any grieving is, is making them grieve, making them feel pain. Right, right. And making them have pain and, and be sad and sorrowful. Right. All right, so let's, what, did, what is this word thorn? When it's talking about a thorn. The English word thorn is the Hebrew word cuts. Found at Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testament, number 6975, or from Hebrew number 6972, meaning in the sense of pricking, 
a stiff, sharp pointed, straight or curved projection. All right, so it's, uh, in other words, really a spear with a point. Yeah, yeah. And, and used to jab. Yeah. In Philippians, the third chapter. So, so roses are, are famous for having the sweetest fragrance. I know, right? And the sharpest thorns. Yeah, yeah. So he said, the no grieving thorn. All right. That's round about the house of Israel. There won't be no pricking briar. Right. Just poking, 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 know, trying, right. trying to draw blood. Philippians, the third chapter. And the only reason is. They don't like that commandment. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Never, never, never ever feel sorry for yourself. Right. And we are not of those that go to a pity party. I know, right? <laughs> right. Not even a little pity party. I know, right? And people can't stand you for that. I know. So I know. But, but they'll just have to get <laughs> over it. But meanwhile, that they, they got this thorny, pricky thing. Yeah, yeah. And they got these projections coming out of them. And so then you get too close to them, yeah. then they like a porcupine. Right, you'll, right. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll draw some blood. And don't be deceived now. That's right. Just got people put a, a, up a good face in public. Yeah. Kind of like it is, right? Yah has already revealed. Yes. I, I, I keep saying about my sister, huh. talking about her aunt. Huh. Oh, yeah. They mean is A E. Yeah. Double L. Yeah. At home. Yep. So they, don't feel alone. We understand. Right. Philippians the third chapter and verse thirteen. Hallelujah. Philippians the third chapter and verse thirteen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do: forgetting those yeah. things which are behind, yeah, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yeah, just like uh, people that, that feel sorry for themselves and want to throw pity parties. <laughs> Then, then they feel like if, if your apology is not good enough, they, right. they'll be, uh, what is it, the prosecutor, the judge, and the jury, and then put you in prison. Yeah, yeah. They hold on I know, right? to things that are in the past. I Why? Know, right? Because that, then that gives that, that pity party the platform. Right, right, right. And then they can speak from the platform.